Are you ready for round two of the makeover on my little table? Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, guys, so I'm gonna catch you up to speed. Last week, we did this table in a beautiful striated metallic design. I brought in a little bit of the uh, Thornton shimmer to match my door because this little table is going to be on my porch. If you'd like to see that video, check out the description of this video and we'll link it for you. Okay, so what we've done is I flipped the table over, so obviously it's easier to work with. And we have sanded down um, all of the loose paint that was on here. We had a lot of flaking paint. Like I said, this poor, uh, poor little table was on our porch and for about five years, it was exposed to the weather and um, we're just gonna give it a facelift. So I've sanded it anywhere I felt that the paint was loose and didn't have good adhesion. Uh, I cleaned it really well and we're ready to go to the next step. So I want to give this little table a facelift so that it's going to pop when you walk into our uh, outdoor space. I'm gonna paint it the same color as our door, but I'm going to um, do a little bit of aging on it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint, the whole table is going to be turquoise, but I'm going to distress it in certain areas. And the area that I distress it, I want it to be uh, the black to show through. So anywhere that I would think it, a normal ta table would have wear and tear, maybe where you would hit it with your foot or maybe where it's constantly rubbed. That's in my mind, what's going to be the black that shows through. So we're gonna come in and I'm just using, and you can use just about any paint that you want. I'm using actually Dixie Belle paint. Um, I love Dixie Belle. I used to be a actual, um, uh, retailer for them. But since I started the epoxy, I've been super busy, so I don't do that anymore, but I love the product. All right. So I know that this area here, and I'm not worried about drips and I'm not worried about all of that. I'm just getting this product on here and getting a really good base. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do the whole thing in a very light coat. And you can see it's very, very thin. I'm just going to get it a good base. The fact that I'm doing this thin, it's going to dry super quick. And then I'm going to go back and do another layer. I'm also going to come in and just do my base. This is actually a new base that we put. The old base um, was starting to have some damage. So we went and put a nice piece of plywood here. And I'll go ahead and paint that as well. As long as what you are painting over is clean and you have good adhesion, you'll be good. Use a good quality paint. You may choose to use a chalk type paint if you like, whatever you want. Just make sure you are putting the correct paint for whatever application you're gonna be doing. If you're gonna be having a piece of furniture that's gonna be outside, make sure you're using a paint that's going to be tough enough to handle, or if you're gonna do outside, you can put a really good top coat. All right, so I have a really good base. I kind of decided when I started, I was gonna just do a light base, but my mind is kind of going. So I think I've decided just to paint the whole thing black, and then I'm going to go from there and build some layers. We always talk about layers, and I'm gonna do that on this little piece. So I may change my mind, three or four times before we get to the end of this piece. So <laughs> stay tuned to the end. Okay, so the black is dry. And while we were on break, my mind starts going and I've decided to kind of go a little bit of a different direction. Imagine that. So I still want to do a distressed look, but I wanna have a different color uh, turquoise come through, not just the black. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cheat because I couldn't find the color that I wanted 
in an acrylic paint. So I'm gonna do some highlighting first, or undertoning, I guess you'd call it, with some spray paint. But before I do that, I'm gonna show y'all a little hack. Get you some Vaseline, and everywhere that you know you want to distress, uh, anywhere you would have natural wear and tear is where I'm gonna put this. So most tables get knocked with their, you know, people hit their feet on things and, and stuff. So I want my edges to the paint not to adhere. So I'm gonna come over here and, and add, and all I'm using is Vaseline. You can use a wax. Vaseline is really easy because it wipes off fairly easy. Uh, you can use a crayon. So I'm just gonna kinda come in here and anywhere I think I may wanna distress it, I'm just gonna put some Vaseline. You can see I'm obviously not being super careful and I'll just hit that. All right, all right. Then we're gonna come in with our spray paint. In this case, I'm using Lagoon. And I'm gonna just spray it now, all that area. I'll let this dry and then what'll happen is then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over the top and I'm gonna paint it with my next color. And then when I get ready to distress, I'll wipe this off and that black will show through. I tell you guys all the time, it's gonna look ugly before it looks pretty. All right, we'll let this dry and we'll be back for the next layer. Okay, so it's dry. Now we're gonna go over the top of it with the Dixie Bell. let's see what color this, Pure Ocean. Now, I'm going for a very worn, rustic-y look, okay? So I'm, I'm not worried about it being super smooth. I want that worn look. So as I apply the paint, I'm just gonna kinda cross hatch it. You'll see that some of that paint will start coming off and that's okay because that's gonna let me get some of that color on the black. You can see I'm cross hatching up and down, cross hatch to really give that worn, textured look. And I'm not doing 100% coverage because I want to be able to see some of that spray paint, that lagoon color, I want it to kind of come through as well. And like I said, if you don't want a really worn look, you don't have to put as much of the Vaseline or whatever release that you're gonna use as I did. But I, like I said, I really want this to look old, like it's been sitting out in the weather. Now I have a coat of the, the uh, turquoise. As it starts to dry, I'm gonna go back with my brush and I'm gonna create more texture. So areas like right here, where you can see that it's starting to dry, I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna lightly tap it and that's gonna kinda cause a little bit of texture. And that texture is gonna help when we go and add a glaze which is gonna be our last step. Okay, so it's dry, the, the second layer that I put on, and now we're gonna have a wet shop towel. You can use a paper towel, you can use a rag. Baby wipes work really well. Now you're gonna come in and I'm just gonna lightly rub and everywhere that, that um, there was the Vaseline, it's going to release the paint. I'm gonna just do it lightly. You don't wanna do it too hard. And like I said, I want this to be very, very, very worn, as if this has been sitting out, people have been kicking it with their feet. Now, I've still got quite a bit. We're gonna go over with some highlight colors as well, but I'm liking this. Now, if you pull too much off, or if you had put too much Vaseline and you, want, you don't want it to look quite as distressed, pull it all off and go back and then just paint the areas where you wanna add more paint. Now, if I wanna come down and go through and pull some of that spray paint so I can see that. I can rub a little bit and you're seeing a little bit of that darker turquoise, which is all I wanted it to do is to barely ever so often peekaboo through so you could see it. You could see that color kind of peekabooing through. Go back with a dry rag. I really like the middle. This is where if you were sitting at a table and you were constantly just maybe kicking the table, there's a little bit of that darker turquoise coming through. Just giving it chippy, layered look is what I'm really going for. I'll continue taking this off, let it dry really well, and then we'll do a glaze. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna come in 
with just an antiquing decorative glaze, and this one actually is Rust-Oleum. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you know that you can make glazes out of just about anything. I'm just using an old chip brush and some shop towels. Okay, so the glaze is dry, and I flipped the table back over, obviously, and kind of touched it all up. So what I'm going to do, because you guys know I love turquoise and copper, I'm going to do some dry brushing, which is going to just hit the highs, give it a little bit of a highlight with some um, metallic copper. So what I'm using, and again, there's so many products out there that you could use, but I'm gonna be using uh, Modern Masters metallic paint, and this is antique copper. All right, now, let me give you guys a pro tip. To do a dry brush, you really want a brush that's old. The older, the better almost. But if you have a brand new brush, I'm gonna show you what to do. Take it and texturize it. Y'all thought I was all smart, right? Well, a little hairdresser I know told me that this is what they call it. So if you do this, it just gives you a really cool little top and it makes it easier to do your dry brush. All right, so dry brushing, very, very easy. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna put a little bit of, of paint on your brush. And then you're literally gonna take it all back off. You're gonna rub it. Until you don't have a whole lot. And a lot of times, like that, I'm still got quite a bit. I'm gonna take a little bit more off. You want it to be almost a dry brush. Imagine that. All right, then you are going to very lightly just hit areas where you want highlights. And I just want highlights on edges. You can kind of see how that copper is just picking up a little bit. Also, any texture that you have, it'll kind of grab a hold of it. And a little bit of that paint on your brush will go a long way. If I want a little more on my, the foot of it, I can hit it a little harder. And I'm just getting a little bit. And you don't have to do it everywhere. All right, load up my brush again. Now, when you load it up, don't ever load it from your tape, your plate and go straight onto your piece. Always, always offload. All right, now I'm gonna start hitting, let's see, I'll hit this area here. And I don't know how well. This is such a, a small amount of detail that I'm not really sure how much the camera is gonna pick up. Because like I said, I just want it to be a hint of that color. All right, now I'm not gonna do it on any of the flat area because it's really hard to really see it. And I really don't want copper everywhere. But I'm gonna hit all my corners and just bring in a little bit of that color. You can see how it just kind of catches the light just a little bit. Dry brushing is a way to really bring depth and bring attention to certain little areas on your piece. So that's a fun fact. All right, so I'm gonna finish this up. Then we're gonna put our sealer on there. So as I was dry brushing, I dropped my brush. And when I dropped my brush, it hit down the middle and it left some streaks and I actually kind of liked it so I don't know when to stop so this is what I'm doing I'm going heavy now on the copper accents and I love it all right so remember earlier I said just a little bit of paint forget that but at least you know how to do a dry brush if you just want a little bit of accent now we're going full send here we go. Lots and lots and lots. So I have quite a bit, and now I'm just gonna kind of run my brush down. I'm not putting very much pressure at all. And what's happening is all of that yummy texture that was on there is grabbing a hold. And then I'm gonna come over here Get a little bolder on my edges. Now I'm still not being crazy. I'm not just painting it. I'm still very lightly hitting it. I'm just going a lot bolder with that. Certain areas will have a lot 
Some areas won't have that much at all. I just, I just love this. You just have to be a little careful knowing that you have more brush and more paint on your brush. You just have to be a little more careful when you go in and start putting that paint on there. Just be a little mindful of how much paint you have on your brush and you're just, don't overthink it. Just get it on there. Remember, this is the, a really worn look that we're going for. This block, this block here, I really want it to look like it's just a big old chunk of copper. It almost looks like it's a patinaed piece of copper. Oops, a patina piece of copper coming through there now. Hit my base. See how it's picking up all that texture on that paint? And then you can still wipe some of that off if it's just too much, because it is a water-based paint. Now, I didn't make a glaze, so it's gonna dry a lot quicker. So if you wanna take something off, you're gonna have to do it pretty quickly, because it's gonna stay. All right, I am loving, I'm loving this, guys. So, your homework is, let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you leave it light with just a little bit of, of a dry brush? Actually, would you even dry brush it? Let me know that. Let me know if you would do a little bit or a whole lot like this. Let me know. All right, I'm gonna finish this up, then we're gonna come then back gonna... and I promise you, we're gonna put a sealer on it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, sealers, let's talk sealers. All righty, so there are so many sealers on the market. You could even use UTC on this. Uh, in fact, that would look really good. Uh, I'm going to use a product called Final Coat. I've used it for years and my faux finishing, it is amazing. I love it. It is so easy to put on and you can build your coverage. And I will put a link in the comments of this video so you guys can get it. All right, you're just gonna wet your sponge and then literally, guys, this is how easy it is. You're just gonna paint it on. And by the time I finish one coat, it's gonna be dry and I can go back and do another coat. You can do up to 10 coats of this and it's not going to chip, it's not gonna crack. It is a great, great finish. Now, I would not recommend this if this is going to be in direct weather, um, but since I'm gonna have this under my porch, I'm not really worried about it. All right, so by the time I get around one time, it's going to be dry and I can do it again. And I'll just build and build and build. All right, guys, I absolutely love how my little table came out. It was so much fun. It brought me back to my faux finishing days and I do miss those days. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below. Do you wanna see more videos like this? Two part where we do a top and then maybe finish out the rest of the project? Let me know. Also, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. Guys, we are scheduled to hit 50,000 uh, subscribers in about two months. So if we keep going like we're going, I'm so excited. Thank you for everybody that has subscribed so far. Also hit the bell for future notifications and that way every single time we do a video, you guys will get a notification. All right guys, also we are offering free shipping on all orders over $100. We have a full line of epoxy products, colorants, and supplies. So check out our website, rk3designs.com. We also do same day shipping if you order before noon central time. So if you have any questions, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I also would like to invite you guys to join our new Facebook group. It's called the RK3 Designs Epoxy Insiders. It is a fast growing group. Great people, lots of talent, love to help each other, and I hope that you join us. So check us out on Facebook. Remember, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. Love you, bye.